All right, we was out here checking the cantaloupes and Rebecca was looking at okra. She hollered at me to come here a minute. So, uh, walked up. Not saying this is what it is. I, say, I, I said, <clears throat> sorry about that because I know what she is fixing to do. Come over here. Right, there you go, sit there. Yeah, they didn't mean to get rough with you, but I knew what you was fixing to do. You see here, which is probably more likely I'm saying maybe a heel print. But if you look right here, it looks like four toes. There's one, two, three, four. Could be a fifth, it's hard to say. I just don't know. Uh, you can tell by my hand, I've got a big hand. Um, when I put my foot by it, water go is a little bit bigger than my foot. Now it's a narrow heel though. But you can see right there. Not saying it's a big foot. But it's something. It's something. Kind of weird. It's almost like his heel went down and his foot barely touched. But what do you think that is a left foot? It's hard to say. Look like me, the big toes over him, but that's me looking at it. That's your right, sister. So I don't know if we can find another one coming off of it. That's what I always hate when you find these one footprints. Just oddball. Sister, and of course she's gonna step right in it and do her thing. That's a dog for you. Look at that right there. I know it's different, but move your leaves there. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean it's not the same trail, I know, but... Well, it could have got there and then turned and went that way or something. It's hard to say. I did notice that one watermelon was gone. I mean, it wasn't eight there. No watermelon gone because you could see where it laid at. So, I don't know. That could be anything. All right. We'll give you more so, later. So, I don't know. Not saying that's what it is. Just saying that was strange. Okay. You know how it is in the Bigfoot world. Good morning. This is Mark from City Creek Bottoms Farmstead. Another fireside chat. Hope everyone's doing okay. This is a Friday morning, so you'll see this video later this evening, hopefully. I didn't get a chance to come up here on Creepy Mountain last Saturday like I'd planned because uh, we had some thunderstorms roll in about 5 o'clock. Um, and of course Sunday I had to go into work early Monday, Tuesday rain come in about the time I needed to come up here and of course the two days I couldn't come which was Wednesday and yesterday of course the weather was fair so I just told my wife I said I'll go up here and do it real quick this morning which is another good time to come I done went over here I'm sitting right here where our meeting spot is our clubhouse is uh, right over here uh minute I'll turn the camera that way maybe before I leave um, but we're up on creepy mountain this morning about 8 30 in the morning uh, I already heard something been good if I'd had a recorder going uh, it was right back here behind the clubhouse sound like that jibber jabber and uh, that's what I was going to talk about today the century that stays right in here and that was probably him I've got the camera looking down the south road here, or this road kind of goes north, but this is south end of the club. So I got the camera looking down that road. Um, there's been many a times uh, we think they cross right down there in that flat. Uh, you can kind of see where it levels out, kind of where some of the limbs have grown out. Used to, you can see better down through there. Uh, we know they've been right behind me before cross. You'd hear the gravel. You know, of course, you wouldn't see it. Couldn't prove that's what it was, but pretty much 
knew that's what it was. So, um, it's been a been a busy week for me and Rebecca. Um, and and you're gonna see me scanning a good bit, uh, just out of habit. Um, we had a busy week. Our cantaloupes, watermelons starting to come in. Some of our field corn and uh, okra um, stuff. So we've been kind of busy. Uh, it's that time of year. It's just still busy time of the year. Uh, I was hoping to get up here last weekend and get over to the lake about an hour before dark and do this video and then, you know, uh, you know, listen for a while, see if we had any, any interaction happen. But I could have some happen here, especially being by myself. Uh, so we'll see. Um, that's what I'm going to do, talk about the century for a few minutes. And also, I brought a bucket with some okra and cucumber. I typically would not do a feeding station right where people are coming. Um, but I'm going to step out here in the woods in a minute and I'm going to leave this okra. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it up and show it to him too. Uh, I'm going to set it out here somewhere more likely where a human wouldn't. And this time of year, ain't nobody coming up here. I looked at the sign in board while ago. Last time anybody had been here was last Sunday. Somebody went fishing. So there's nobody been on this club since Sunday. Uh, so I'm going to take this bucket of okra and cucumber. And I'm going to set them in here somewhere. And then I'll come back in about a week, check it, see if anything's touched. Um, we'll just see what happens. Uh, all you can do is try. But uh, talking about the century, after a while, me and Keith started noticing something when we would come in here late in the evening, especially right at dark. Now, but we'd usually hear wood knock. Uh, I'm going to say about 95% of the time, we would hear wood knock. Usually when we get out of the truck to go up here to the signing board, signing, we have a signing board. Uh, I know a lot of people say, don't. I try to explain things where people understand what's going on. And I'm going to get over this way a little bit. That way y'all can kind of see down that road better. Um, I mean, I doubt we'll have anything happen, but you never know. <laughs> the one time you turn the camera off or looking the other way, there he goes. But anyway... Um, um, we started noticing when we would come in late in the evenings close to dark to either get ready to coon hunt or to do booger hunting when we'd pull up here we'd hear a knock somewhere right in here and kind of got to watching that and noticing it was happening pretty regular now during the middle of the day it wouldn't happen like you know like you know, two or three o'clock in the evening wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen in the mornings. This was mostly in the evenings. And that's why I say we got a sentry up here. Um, and he's been seen several times by several different people, um, several hunting club members. Got a glimpse of him. Uh, we used to have a, in the early days, our, and I'm going to use the camera that way a minute. That way you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go slow if I can. We're going to take it off from that for a minute. And I'm going to be out of the picture for a minute. If I can get this camera to work right. Let's see. There we go. So I'm going to move slow. That way don't get everybody swimmy headed. And right there. Used to be where our old clubhouse was. We had some teenagers come up here one night with a four-wheel drive and tear it down for us. You know, just so what we ended up doing. I, I don't know if you can see up through there behind the mimosa tree and through the pines, but there's a clubhouse. Here in a minute, I'll walk over and show it to you. Uh, but that's the clubhouse we built it back in. Oh, about 2010 somewhere in that neighborhood and this has always been our little meeting spot when we was running dogs and um always had a sign in board 
I'll in fact here behind me I'll go real slow that's our old old sign in boards you can tell ain't no boards in there no more uh, we used to have a wooden platform here and that thing has some this something that went on with it one time so and when we built the clubhouse we moved the sign in board over there but anyway um, just letting you know we do have a sign in board that way we know who's on the club that way if somebody don't show up at home and their wife or kin people calls uh, they post sign out where they're hunting uh, we don't have to sign out we we had to sign in in the summertime but you just gotta tell what you're doing um, but uh, in the winter time during hunt season uh, you got to be marked out where you're at. And I had to come find a fellow one night, and thank gosh he was just asleep. Uh, got a call at 8.30 at night from his wife, hysterical. Uh, she uh, been trying to call him, couldn't get him. Uh, I called a couple other guys. They met me up here. Uh, of course, we seen where he was signed in at, where he was hunting. We went over there, and I went to hooping and hollering for him, found his truck. Uh, hollered for him. Finally, he answered back. He'd been down there asleep. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad it ended that way. Um, ain't no telling what he had come up there and check him out while he's over there asleep. But uh, anyway, but going back to the century, um, uh, like I said, we noticed about uh, we'd hear the wood knocks. Well, over time, like I was explaining about the clubhouse used to be over here and and we moved it. Well, later on, we had some different people that joined the club that had little camper trailers, not the big ones, but, you know, the smaller ones that you could get up this hill. And they would come, you know, stay in them on the weekend because some of these people, we had a group of boys from uh, Auburn that were going to Auburn University, and uh, they would come up here on Saturday and Sunday and hunt during the weekend. A lot of times they'd bring in their girlfriends, you know. They'd get up here at night, and they'd, build them a fire you know they probably done a little drinking and stuff like that and then you know next day they would hunt and also we had several other people and we still have several that do that now they'll bring their camper up here about october and they'll leave it you know during hunting season um, but anyway um, then some other things happened down the road it showed me it showed me and keith and some of the others that we had one hanging out here. And I think he's a century. I think it's a young male. I think he's a century. Um, century is a guard. Um, you know, if, if you don't know what the word century means, he's, he's a guard. Uh, that's what in the military they call, you know, used to call them sentries. Uh, I don't know what to call them now, but, uh, but basically a guard, a lookout. And I think what he was doing when uh, people would show up here close to dark, he was warning the others, hey, there's humans on the club. Um, so I think that's what was going on. Um, I'm, on I'm not going to go into them in depth. Later on, I'll go into each story uh, or experiences that people had here with the century in depth. But today, I'm going to just kind of skim the top. Um, and like I said... Um, you know, we had people camping out here, so I'll talk a little bit about the boys that were going to school at Auburn. There was four of them. They had joined the club. At the time, we were still running dogs, but also part of our club was stalk hunting. They didn't really care nothing about dog hunting, but they wanted a place to stalk hunt. So, and y'all excuse my shirt, coming up the hill a while ago, coffee went everywhere. Uh, these, these torrential rains we're having is just washing out roads and everything. Um. I should have known better, but uh, anyway, they had set them a camper up, and before, right before that, the clubhouse, well, part of the clubhouse was built. It had a roof and poles. Uh, we hadn't added the siding and the fl flooring, and they had shoved their camper on one side of it over here. Well, at the time, these pines were not that tall. They were probably in the you know, 15 foot range, maybe 12, 15 foot. wasn't real big. This was, uh, this was one of the last areas of the hunting club that got clear cut. Uh, that was probably 
um, you know, around 2007, 2006, uh, with most of this this way, about 500 acres. Beaver ponds right down there, a couple hundred yards. So pretty much all this was cut over, about 500, 600 acres of it, all the way over to the lake. Uh, the lake from this distance, maybe a mile, I guess I would say it was around a mile. Uh, anyway, uh, of course me and Keith were coming in and out coon hunting and plus doing the booger hunting because like I told you a lot of time we took and comp you know, used them both together and we learned pretty quick that to thank the boogers for hunting with us. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say about that one, but because uh, they sure did show up a lot of times when we were coon hunting up here. But, um, and like I told you, I thought, you know, my opinion or theory on that was they were getting the coons after we were leaving because me and him didn't harvest many of them, you know, just mainly let the dogs tree them. But um, one night in particular, and uh, uh, Pat Rance can verify this too because Pat happened to be up here camping out that weekend. And somebody else was with Pat. I can't remember who it was. Well, me and Keith, it was on a Friday night. Me and Keith came in. Them boys were already here from Auburn, you know, signed in, spoke, talked to them for about 10 or 15 minutes. Well, they knew about Pat being a, you know, booger hunter, and they knew we did. And, of course, I think they got their giggles and all that out of it, which was fine. I learned a long time ago not to pay that no attention. And I've got an answer for a lot of people when they do that. And so, well, when you want to come with me, I'll carry you and we'll go. <laughs> Most people shut up real quick. Uh, but I've had some takers and they became believers. Uh, in fact, I'm going to have a couple of them on here. Uh, I talked to one of them. His uh, wife's father's having a lot of health issues. He said he couldn't do it right now, but he said later down the road he would definitely uh, get with me. And I'm going to have him tell his stuff. Uh, I'd rather people tell their stuff than me tell it, but I am going to go over stuff and later on I'm going to have them to come back and, you know, go really in depth in it and tell you about it. So I think that's more authentic. Um, that way you hear their version, you know, because my version may be a little bit different, you know, not saying we're hoaxing, not saying we're telling the truth. I didn't experience what he experienced, so I can't go into his emotions with it. All I can do is tell you what he told me, you know, and, and go from there. And uh, so, but uh, the college boys, that's what we used to call them. They had been, they had been in the club. This was their second year. And there's a good set of boys. Well, one night, like I said, Pat and him was here. And we, uh, Came in, spoke to them, then we went over and sat with Pat and them a little while. Well, about 10 o'clock, 10.30, we hear a truck coming, and you could tell this truck was in a hurry. And these are some rough roads up here. And we made a comment. I said, somebody's fixing to tear their truck to pieces on these roads. Well, you could tell they turned on the lake road coming down to us. And I'm going, oh, Lord of mercy, what's going on here? All of a sudden, it's them college boys. They pull up, and they pile out of the truck, and they out of breath, and they excited, and they carrying on. And we we, we seen something up there at the camp. I said, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? He said, well, we're sitting there around the fire, and I just happened to look up. And he said, I seen this big face looking through the pine limbs. And he said, as soon as I seen it, they let the pine limbs go. And he said, you heard it turn around, walk off. And the rest of them said, yeah, we heard it walk off. And <laughs> these boys were excited. I mean, almost tickled me and Pat and we kind of did, you know, snigger a little bit. And not in a mean way, just, you know, the, you know, the excitement they were having. And man, y'all got to come up here. Y'all got to come up here. I said, well, he's probably going to be gone before we get there. I said, he didn't go far. I said, he probably stepped off down in the woods somewhere. And, uh, and you know, he didn't go far. So we did end up coming up here, uh, walked around a little bit. Of course, you know, he he probably moved off down the hill or something. So uh, 
from then on, them boys uh, took that serious. I think they was nervous about staying up here at night from then on. I told them don't worry about it. Because there were several other people had campers up here. And they, yeah, there's another guy had some trouble. Not really trouble, just stuff going on. But uh, So them boys became a believer. Um, the other guy was a guy that got in the turkey hunt. But he decided to deer hunt some too. And one night something messed with his door handle on his camper. And one night he seen a silhouette of something go by his camper. And then one morning woke up and his camper door was open. Um, and then he brought his wife up here one time and put her on a green patch and uh, uh, something walked up to her little portable shooting house and rubbed the rubbed the uh, shooting house, scared her half the day. She come out and then it, uh, whatever it was, she heard it take off running and jumped in the bushes. She come out. But we'll go in depth on that later on, but it did growl at her. And it followed her all the way back over here to this clubhouse. It just happened right over here. So I'm figuring it was that century. Uh, a couple of other things that's happened here in uh, time. I, I had brought a friend of mine that I used to work with. Uh, he's a paranormal hunter. Uh, he didn't really deal with Bigfoot and all that stuff, but he was a paranormal hunter. Well, he, word, you know, of course, when you go to workplaces, don't take long for the word to get out when you're doing stuff like this. You know, people like to pick at you and all that. No, don't pay it no attention. I don't worry about it. Um, but um, anyway, he wanted to come up here. Of course, he lived in Tennessee, up there at Shiloh. And what he would do, he'd come down. We worked 12 hour shifts in, so he would come down and work, you know, his three or four days. Then he'd go back home for three or four days. And he, he was about five hours away. He right above, up there, right above where Combo lives at. Anyway, he, uh, so I brought him up here one Friday evening. We parked right here in this very spot right next to this uh, old signing board, the old wooden one right there. And it was right at dark. Well, I had to run back to the house real quick. Uh, my wife then called and... Uh, needed me to come back home for a minute so and I don't even really remember why uh, I don't know if it was something dealing with the kids or what was going on so I told uh, my friend I said just wait right here I'll be back you know because back then I was five ten minutes away you know go straight down the hill hang a left or go down the road half a mile and pull right back in you know so I took off got home took care of whatever I had to do and uh, I was on my way back, my phone rang. Man, man, get up here, get up here, get up here. I said, what's wrong? You could tell he was excited. Man, I, he said, I'm sitting here in my truck. He said, I was on my computer checking my emails and stuff. And he said, all of a sudden, there's something hit this side of this uh, sign-in board. He said, it sounded like a big rock or something, slapped it or something. He said, it scared me half to death. I said, well, I, I'm turning back on the club road, and I'll be there in just a minute. And he said, well, I'm in my truck. I got my lights on. I got my pistol pulled out. I said, okay. I, I said, I understand. And I can see that. You know, he he, you know, he wasn't expecting that. Um, of course, get up here, and he done got the truck out here in the middle of the place where he could see everywhere. He had every light on his truck lit up, bed light, had the backup lights on, front light. He had the place lit up. Of course, we got up here and nothing didn't happen the rest of the night. And, of course, that fired him up. And come to find out where he lives at, they, they, they got some up there. Uh, he started uh, messing around with them up there. Around, uh, he knows there's some on there on the military park, Shiloh. He knows there's some there and then back over where he lives at. Uh, a bunch of Amish have moved in there, and I think they went to complaining about them. I think they're getting into their crops and stuff. So, well, a few weeks, it's probably a month later, he hit me up to come up here again. And so we came back up here, and we parked right here again. That's where he wanted to go. He didn't want to go to the lake. He wanted to go right here. And, of course, uh, me and him were sitting on tailgate here. And we'd been here an hour, maybe. Uh, the ambient light was not bad. It wasn't a full moon or nothing, but you could see down this road a little bit that night. And he told me, he said, uh, you see something 
down there on the left side of the road, kneeling down. It looks like a, a big blob sitting down there. And I kept, I said, yeah, I kind of do see something. Probably another 30 seconds rolled around because we both kind of went to staring at it. And I guess whatever it was, figured out we were staring at it. I'll never forget it. It gets right up, turns, and goes right across this road, right under that flat spot. Me and him both watch it walk. And I think we both come out of our mouth at the same time and said, did you see that? And boy, that just fired him up. He just, he, uh, which it fired me up too. I mean, you don't have them do that much. So uh, this one was probably in the six, seven foot range. Uh, Cause we walked down there. Uh, he wanted to walk down there. We walked down there and we kind of got to looking at stuff. He was probably six, seven footer. And he was thin built. That's like I tell a lot of people. A lot of the ones I've seen, the, f the few I've seen, I think total, what I know was a booger. You know, not a glimp, not a, not a glance, not eye shine. This was a silhouette, looking at the silhouette of something. Of course, I had that one daytime sight and the rest of them's always been at night. You know, I've had them glimpses in the daytime of something, but you can't count a glimpse. The only thing I can count is when I see that whole body outline. I, I can count that. I uh, know my eyes are not fooling with me, especially when I got other people standing with me and they see the same thing. Yeah, we done seen it, you know. Um, you know, like I said, this one, um, it's like I tell a lot of people, they're built like track runners. The ones I've seen, except for the old big boy up here, um, they're built like track runners to me. I mean, they're, they're, when they're turning like this, they're slim. I mean, they're just slim. Now, yeah, they may have the broad shoulders and old big head, a lot of them, but they they slim built. They've got to be slim built, most of them. They've got to get through these woods in a hurry. Um, but that's my opinion. Um, you're going to hear most of the time, most stuff is my opinion because it ain't fact. Um, I mean, because nobody's proved it. And I ain't no expert, but this is what I've seen. So I'm, I'm telling you what I've experienced and seen. So um, so there are several other things that's went on. We've had uh, several other Bigfoot hunters come in here, and we'd sit up here at night just sitting and have stuff happen. Uh, my friend Adam has set up recorders in here and got the jibber-jabber and wood knocks and knocks and a few times whoops. Um, um, had rocks thrown at us here, sticks. Um, then just, you know, other crazy weird things, you know, just, I mean, just uh, tons of it, tons of it. But, uh, so this is another hot spot on the club. And I, I, I'm pretty sure when the century uh, lets the rest of the group know that something's here, some of the rest of them probably show up. Uh, we've seen the eye shine, kind of we've seen it right over here. Let me turn the camera back this way a minute. Uh, we've seen it, you know, kind of in this area, you know, looking at us. And then this little, uh, little uh, spot right here where the roads are, are divided. We've seen it right in there before. Uh, and then, of course, down the road here, you know, like down there. So, uh, in fact, one night I was sitting right here. And you're looking at this, this is the road that goes out to the lake. Of course, there's a little road that goes up to the clubhouse. And I was sitting probably right in here. Uh, the club president, which is still the president now, was sitting there. And it was after dark. It done got to be 6 o'clock at night. We both had our headlights off. Just sitting there talking. Um, I got a glimpse of something. If you can see where that road sign is right there, it says 6 on it. Because I was pointing that direction. He was pointing, looking that way. I seen something, just a flash, go from there to there. And it was pretty tall. So that was a glimpse. I ain't going to say it was a Bigfoot. It was a glimpse of something. So, but uh, anyway. So this is another little hot spot of this place. Uh, we have sit here and listen to vocals at night. Especially back down toward the beaver pond area 
we've uh, heard a lot of stuff come from that direction <clears throat> this is up on a pretty good hill it's about 900 feet right here the south end of the club uh, going back several miles that way and several miles this way most of it is the I guess you would call the lower side of the mountain uh, around 900 feet um, see Sotokaga is 582 feet above sea level I think at my house it's um, 600 and then this lower side of the mountain uh, is around 900 um, and this is, uh, this used to be a county road. That's hard to believe. There used to actually be a couple of houses up here. I've, I've mentioned that before. Uh, the one house that used to be here, if you go right down to the Beaver Pond, I know in one of my videos I was showing y'all, um, back up on the side of the hill, used to be a man. He had an orchard in here. He raised apples and pears, and he was known wine maker and whiskey maker and, uh, he even, uh, I don't think he ever owned a car. Uh, a good friend of mine lived down here at the foot of the hill. Uh, his grandfather's property and they grew up on it said that, uh, um, you know, he used to come out with his wagon, with his mules in the 60s. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, I think he passed away and his son sold what property they had left up here to the uh, paper company then. Uh, so, um, and like I said, this is a, a pretty neat. Uh, a lot of stuff's happened on this place. Um, and, you know, we're, we're fixing to start uh, getting deeper and deeper in it. Uh, you know, especially uh, when we start, when me and Keith started doing the feeding station, baiting station. Um, you know, that, that, that started... Uh, really a lot of stuff going on and then some of the club members started having experiences um, had one step out on a greenfield on a lady scared her half to death uh, called her husband <laughs> she was tore up about it never hunted up here again uh, um, several other people has had some issues uh, Never did hurt nobody. They just scared the devil out of somebody. I mean, you know, you ain't sitting there expecting that. And all of a sudden, one of them things steps out the field on top of you. And I don't know why he done it. I don't know if he was trying to scare her or he didn't realize she was in there. I don't know. You know, it's hard to say. But, uh, you know, it's interesting at times, really interesting. Well, of course, since I've had the camera running, and, uh, of course, I made a lot of racket when I got here. I'd done that on purpose. I uh, shut the uh, truck door several times loud and made racket. Uh, that way one would know I was here. Of course, I didn't ever hear would not. But I did hear what I thought was some jibber-jabber one time. But, it's, you know, can't prove that either. Uh, you know, of course, that right there is a woodpecker if you're hearing that. Uh, He's right there. I can tell he's on up in the tree, too, unless one's climbed the tree. I have done that before, though. Um, got a story for you on that one when we went to Little Bear Creek uh, years ago on an outing. Uh, Kumbo was at that one, Pat Rance. Um, I believe Vicky and Dan, I can't remember their last name. Of course, Jim King was there. Mr. Tall didn't make that one. Uh, Trying to remember, there was some other people from Mississippi and some people from Tennessee. I can't remember everybody that was there. But uh, we have, me and Keith had one go up a tree on us and <laughs> trying to tell everybody else, here's one in the tree, and they wouldn't even listen to us. Uh, you know. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Keith's wife had one down here at the beaver pond in the tree. Uh, that's when me and Keith realized these things use trees too. Well, me and Mr. Tall talked about that. He said, yeah, he said, uh, he said, there's been other people talking about them being up in trees. So, uh, um, learned then to start looking up some, too. <laughs> and, uh, we should have known it anyway, because, you know, they they climbing them trees, getting them coons out, if that's what they were doing, and I'm pretty sure they was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what was happening. I mean, I wasn't there to prove it. Um. 
And that's the thing, you're always going to hear me say, it's my opinion, or I think that's what they were doing. You're never going to hear me say that's what he is doing. I'm just going to tell you what I think he's doing. Uh, just like that one that night, he's just checking them boys out. He'd probably been watching them the whole time. And uh, you know, when the guy from Montgomery got in for a while, uh, I think he just checking him out. Uh, I think these up here wanted to hurt somebody, they'd done done it. Uh, I mean, I've been fooling with them since 2007, and then all them years before then, stuff going on. I mean, I've been up here by myself at night, you know, come up here coon hunting by myself, which is dangerous, really shouldn't do that. You never know if you step in a hole or trip up or, you know, what happened to you. Um, and I've heard stuff around me, they didn't fool with me. Uh, uh, I don't think this group's mean. Now, I've been in some places where I didn't like. <laughs> that little Bear Creek, I was ready to leave that place. Uh, then there's a couple other little places I've been, I was ready to pack up and get on out of there. And I'm not a real skittish fella, so uh, if you hear me say it's time to go, you might be wanting to get in the vehicle and let's go. Uh, one other thing before I get ready to go, Cause me and her have got a busy day. We got corn to pull and check watermelon, cantaloupes. Um, got to go to the feed store and pick up feed, feed them animals. Uh, Lord, that feed's getting out of sight. Uh, I'm glad I've got some extra corn I grew this year and that uh, grain sorghum. That may come in helping on the chickens, turkeys. Uh, me and her may have to start to using her old real lawnmower. We'll have to show you that one day. And what I'm talking about is the old motorless mower that the people used to have. You know, the wheels turned to little blades. And uh, that does pretty good. You know, it does pretty good. So we may have to start using that thing a little bit. I don't know. Start offsetting some of them feed prices on her rabbits. Um, in fact, this weekend I got a uh, process for a few more. I've been processing so many every weekend. I took a break last weekend because I worked. and um, but This weekend I'm going to have to get in there and get a few more. We're trying to get our numbers down a little bit and uh, you know, get it more uh, get our rabbits a little more stabilized um, and everything. So, And chicken the same way. Um, like I said, I'm going to take these cucumbers and okra. I'm going to probably put them right over here on this side of the road, um, just out in the woods, maybe about 30 foot. Um, I'm not going to tote the camera with me because that'll be bouncing up and down. And too, i got to watch for rattlesnakes. This place, like I told you, is rattlesnake heaven up here. Um, so I'm going to be watching for that. Um, but I'm going to leave them a little gift here. Like I said, I wouldn't typically... Oh, I see what I thought I had something for a minute, but <laughs> never mind. That's why your eyes play tricks on you. Sometimes you got to keep looking at it a minute and then focus and see what you're looking at. Uh, there's a big butt water spider webs. Look just like a head sitting there looking at me for a minute. I had to do a double look there for a minute. I said, Lord, he ain't that brave. But uh, um, what I was going to say is. Wednesday afternoon, I believe it was Wednesday, uh, me and Rebecca were out there at the okra patch. She's got two long rows of the burgundy okra. Real beautiful plants. Uh, they don't have no disease in them, and the okra is beautiful. And a lot of people around here don't want to eat it. I ain't figured that one out, but it's beautiful okra. It stays tender longer. You know, of course, I grew up with the Clemson spineless. And that's what everybody around here likes, which, I mean, it's not a bad okra, but the last few times I grew it, it looked like it had disease in it. Um, and it just didn't do well. And this burgundy just produces. Once that plant gets where it needs to be and starts blooming, that thing will produce all the way to frost. And I mean, I'm talking about five-gallon bucketfuls of okra. Um, and I don't understand why people don't want it. I just, I don't know. And some of them won't even try it. I mean, I, I try to give it away. Say, hey, hey, try your mess of it and see if you like it. You know, and they won't even do that, you know. 
But, you know, so like I said, I'm setting my ways on stuff. Some other people are too. So, uh, but what I was going to tell you, when I was out in Oakerfield, I know I got off rambling there a minute. But I always try to explain things. That way you know what we were doing and why we were there. That way you know it just wasn't, you know, I, I try to, I don't know what the word is for it, make it more realistic. Um, not making up nothing. I'm just saying I want this to be more realistic. You know, you know, between us and y'all that's watching, that way you understand what's going on, and and I hope I explain things well. I hope I do. Uh, but we were out there walking around. She just started start gathering okra, and of course I was looking for cantaloupes, and in that morning glory patch I got, whew, I ain't never seen morning glories like it. But uh, she says, "Hey, come here." She said, uh, this may be a footprint sitting here. So I walk over, and I'm looking at it, and darn, I'm going, well, yeah, because uh, you can see toes. So we took a video of her phone. Of course, I knelt down, and here come my little dog, sister. So I had to catch her real quick. Well, she was fixing to step right in the middle of it, so I had to catch her and get her over here. Cause I mean, she don't know no better. She thought I was when I kneel down, she's automatically going to come for petting, you know. And so I had to catch her, get her moved, and then, you know, we kind of pointed to the toes. I've been figuring one's been coming to the house. Uh, we've had some things happen here in the last month or so. Uh, Rebecca said something food with the doorknob twice at the house. I've noticed my deer have disappeared in the last two weeks. They, you know, they was there just giving me fits with my peas and, um, they have calmed down. Uh, there's peas growing back out there again. Um, I mean, I got corn coming in, so something's going on there at the house. Uh, one night that something food with the front door. Rebecca was sitting in the living room. Of course, sister, you know, she's a little house dog too. She went ballistic. Um, and then Rebecca said, it was just a second later, like she seen something go by the window. Now we, we live off the road a little bit, so we leave our curtains open a little bit, you know, especially like the living room. And then, uh, about a week and a half ago, I was at work, and she said uh, she heard a big racket around the back door. Of course, sister went ballistic again. Uh, she got, you know, of course, Rebecca got up, got the spotlight, got her pistol, and looked around, didn't see nothing nowhere, and let sister out, and sister wouldn't go nowhere. She stayed about five foot from her, Rebecca. She wouldn't leave the porch, so I don't know. So I said, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my cameras up. I got some M. Deltry Moultry Cellular cameras. Uh, so I've set them up, one in the backyard and one in the front yard. Ain't got a picture and everything's quieting down. Uh, still got peas growing, so the deer ain't hitting them. So I don't know if it's still coming up. I don't know if that's what it is or not. I mean, you never, I mean that's one of them things you never really know. Um, I noticed one of my flood motion floodlights had quit working, so I got them back working the other day, too. Not real crazy about them coming up to the house, if that's what's coming up to the house, especially when I'm gone. Um, and, and, you know, he may have been, if it was one, he may have been playing. I know Jonathan Odom got a glimpse. He said he seen one over there one day, uh, and I wouldn't doubt it. Down there on my wood line. Um, if you go to GPS and you look behind my property and how the land runs and what it runs to, there's a very good possibility of one be coming in there. Especially with all the deer coons I got. Anytime you got that, you're going to, more than likely, they're going to show up. You know, predators are going to show up. He's a predator. They're going to show up. Plus, a good home back there because nobody's fooling around back there. So. So I hope we get that little video on with this one. Um, 
I still got to get the audio from Keith downloaded of the talk we got that night of the Samurai talking. We, we got to find that new laptop, so that's making life a lot easier. Uh, it's amazing how they make them laptops where they, or computers where they won't last long. You fill up your memory and then they want you to buy another computer or another new hard drive or something, you know. There's always something. Uh, plus they're always updating and I don't know. I think it's a money racket. But, uh, well, I hope you liked today's video. Um, it's uh, like going to be another hot day. I'm fishing the get ready to pack it up, run to the feed store, and get home, take a few things, uh, take care of a few things, and uh, probably take me a little nap since I worked off work this morning. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to get back up here this weekend and have next week, I'm hoping to get to the lake if the weather would hold off. Uh, this other day I was getting ready to get in the truck and I could hear the thunder and I looked at my radar on my phone and I said, ain't no sense heading up there and I'm glad I didn't because 20 minutes later the bottom fell out and I mean the rains we've been getting lately are not normal rains they are I mean they're torrentials they just it rained hard for you know we had that big flood back on June 8th then we had another one late part of June and we've had a couple in July I mean just big rains you know dumping four or five inches that one June 8th you know dumped nine inches uh, it flooded downtown Sotokaga, flooded a lot of people's houses, blowed the roads out in places, blowed a bridge out or two. And of course, you've seen that video where it's run across the road there at my house, you know, a foot deep, you know, right below the house and, uh, you know, backed up against my mother's house, you know, and uh, just, I mean, now after the big rains, behind it to be the gentle rains. I hadn't figured it out. Uh, and when, whew. Um, I got more limbs laying around my place I've picked up in the last month. I mean, of course, we you know, got that fire pit, and we burn a lot of them out there when we have people over and stuff. And um, so, and if you're close by this weekend, we'll have our uh, monthly campfire at the house, 6 o'clock. I know most of you don't live close by. Uh, we try to do that once a month just for encouragement, friendship, people to get out of the house well, that's one thing we all need to be doing is encouraging each other being positive with each other having fun with each other there's enough negativity in the world you know and enjoy people in life because you know we all don't you know before you know it you know we're gone or our loved ones are gone or friends or people we've known for years are gone so if you got time to talk to people, talk to them. I like to talk to people face to face. Um, I've met several people through our channel. Uh, the exchange phone number started talking to them. Um, I like talking one on one with people, especially face to face. Um, tells me a lot about a person. And uh, I appreciate all my old subscribers for supporting us and staying with us and I appreciate all the new subscribers and uh, appreciate everybody making comments um, it, it helps my feelings um, and appreciate you viewing our stuff um, I hope that our homesteading side is helping you with some things later on I've got some things I'm going to do um, you know dealing with tractors and plowing and some other different things. Um, later on, we'll be making corn meal with the grist meal. Uh, Rebecca's going to be uh, showing how to process food more. And won't be long. We'll be planting the fall crops and um, you know doing some other things. So I uh, appreciate y'all uh, watching that, and I appreciate y'all watching the uh, fireside chats. You know, and uh, I hope every one of you has a good weekend. I hope you be safe and, um, you know, encourage each other and back each other up. Uh, even in this Bigfoot community, that's what we need to be doing. Um, I don't understand. Um, you know, that's why I backed up out of the Bigfoot community for a little while, just the way some folks act. And I don't know why they act that way. 
I, I don't understand it. Nobody has, to me, no, there's not a soul in the Bigfoot world that's the authority on this. Um, I've learned some stuff. I've, most of my stuff is just, ex, you know, experience and stuff and telling y'all about it or telling you about the investigations that I went and worked. So, and me and Keith for it, but mostly it's just telling you what's went on. Some of the stuff we've noticed, caught on to. Uh, don't really know what a lot of it means, but we've caught on to it. You know, I have my opinions and theories, but, uh, you know, we're all in the same boat in this. Um, I just sometimes don't understand people. Well, I'm going to get off him from doing all this uh, rambling. Um, I hope everyone has a good weekend and the next week. And be safe. Love each other. Encouragement. Make new friends. So give us a like. Uh, subscribe. Share. Hit that notification button. Um, you know, and uh, comment, especially comment. Tell your friends about us. Um, I hope these videos are helping you uh, on the homesteading, homesteading side and on the uh, Bigfoot side. Like I said, me and Rebecca are not experts. We'll show you what we know or the best way we can. We'll answer questions the best way we can. If we don't know the answer, we'll try to look it up if we can, if it's something that can be answered. So, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, before I turn this off real quick, I'm going to ease this camera up. Now, I'm trying not to shake y'all to death. <laughs> but I will kind of give you a little glimpse of what the place looks like. I'm going to go flow a little bit. So, y'all bear with me. Hope I'm not bouncing y'all too much. So, And like I said, I'm going to let you know something about how the cucumbers and okra turns out. And you can probably, oh, the morning dove. I guess you can see the clubhouse up there. So, you know. And uh, it's kind of just what the area looks like in here. You know. Like I said, when winter time gets here, you'll be able to see. So, well, I'm gonna get off from here. I'm gonna go put these cucumber and okra out, and I'm on. Uh, hadn't heard nothing else. Of course, as soon as I turn this camera off, something will happen. <laughs> Always does. So, I'll let you. Before I go, we'll look down this road here a minute, real quick, too. Got to get this little thing that Rebecca's got that helps keep this camera from bouncing. You can't ever tell, I might catch something on the camera. You never know. And this is going out of the club. You can see down that road. It goes down there and then it drops off again and it goes drops off again and again. <laughs> so it just keeps dropping off. We well, all have a good day. This is Mark from Cedar Creek Bottoms. Farmstead, Fireside Chats. Take care. Bye-bye.